What's going on, everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're here for a new Madden 24 realistic rebuild of the Tennessee Titans. This has been a rebuild that I've been wanting to do ever since they got their new head coach. They fired Mike Rabel, which was maybe a little surprising. They ended up hiring Brian Callahan, the offensive coordinator from the Cincinnati Bengals. So I knew all along, like when you think of Tennessee, for as long as Madden has been a playbook sim. They have been a team that just, you feed Derrick Henry. It's been very difficult to build a Titan squad sticking with this Tennessee playbook. It's very difficult to develop a quarterback. It's very difficult to develop wide receivers because it's so, it's like 75% of the offense is Derrick Henry dominating. So, two things to this. Part one is with Callahan, we're going to be going over the Cincinnati Bengals offense. And I think on the defensive side, they got Denard Wilson, who actually loved that hire. He was awesome here in Philadelphia. Probably should have got the D.C. job here in Philadelphia last year. So we're going to have the Baltimore Ravens defense, which that will be interesting as well. But Cincinnati Bengals offense, I'll tell you what, I have no idea what to expect out of the development here of Will Levis. I think IRL, we saw enough out of Will Levis to say, hey, that could be that could be a franchise quarterback there for the Tennessee Titans. But staying on the old Titans playbook, they just run the football so much, you're not going to get really a, a fair shot at developing him. Right? He's never going to put the big-time numbers to really start to ascend up dev traits and stuff like that. But now that we're going with the Cincinnati playbook, well, you could see absolutely big-time numbers. The last rebuild we did with the Chargers, with Harbaugh, who has that Cincinnati offense. We had Herbert put up insane MVP caliber seasons, which leads me to believe that there is the potential. It's not automatic, but there is potential that Will Levis is going to do that. Derrick Henry is set to be a free agent. We saw IRL. The final game of the Titans regular season. He did a very public apology. Thank you for everything. Which pretty much says Derrick Henry is going to be not a Tennessee Titan next season. So I'm going to abide by that. That will be the one little house rule restriction I slap on this rebuild. Is that we are going to be, you know, at least letting Derrick Henry explore his options. We had Tajay Spears who looked really, really good in like a role player type role. I had him in fantasy football. Honestly, kind of gambling that... They would shut down Derrick Henry. He, I'm not going to say would pick up an injury, but you know, you know, as you do in fantasy football, you pick up the handcuffs. Uh, but he looked good. I do think, you know, that if you know, kind of letting Derrick Henry go, what do we do with DeAndre Hopkins, right? Because he's kind of in the same mold of, do you trade him? Do you let him walk? Do you have him here to give as much potential around Will Levis to succeed? I'm kind of leaning that direction right now. So. Got some interesting decisions. I don't necessarily want to be in a fire sale. Like, again, we're not trading Derrick Henry. I believe he's a free agent, so we're just going to kind of let him walk. On the defensive side, a uh, little, little dicey, right? You're looking at who is going to be the studs on this team, right? Offensively, it's going to have to be... Oh, great, get that great loading stream. Obviously, it's got to be Will Levis. I think Skaronski. I think Akonkwo. I think in this new offense... Uh, let's put some pretty big expectations that Traylon Burks can be a guy. When you look at the defense, now we get the Baltimore Ravens defense. I don't know necessarily how well they sim. I have never done a Ravens franchise yet. But we know Jeff Simmons is an absolute monster. We know we have some value in, in the secondary between Roger McCreary, Murphy Bunting, Caleb Farley. we got some dev traits there. you got Harold Landry uh, as far as the pass rush. Two middle linebackers are solid. I do think we're going to have to have a, a decision to make around their contracts. I'm pretty sure they're usually free agents fairly early on. Hooker is is definitely a key piece that we can build around on this defense as well. But even with the fresh new playbooks, which gives us a sense of, I've never seen a Titans team like this. I don't know how this is all going to work out. There is still a roster here that is not the best. 77 overall, which from all, like, what is that? If you're comparing them against every other overall in the game, bottom there's no way that's bad enough to be bottom five, but it's definitely bottom 10 team in Madden 24. Ergo, we're going to need a lot of in the way of rebuilding on both offense and defense. Luckily, we have $132 million of salary cap. We now have a new playbook that I think is going to help Will Levis ascend as a franchise quarterback. Let's get into the year zero offseason and make some goddamn moves here for the Titans. We're going to add the stats to maybe give us a direction on some of the role players we may need to keep, we may need to move on from. 1,800 yards, 8 touchdowns, 4 picks, Will Levis. Again, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm firmly in the camp that we develop him. Derrick Henry, not really Derrick Henry type numbers. 
it's just it is what it is, man. Insane. Going back to high school, he just has like the most. I would not be surprised if like out of any running back in history, Derrick Henry has the most attempts in a career going to high school, college, and now pros. Like I don't even think it's close. Probably unless there's like some running back from the '80s that like I can't think of. Like Adrian Peterson, maybe another guy. Emmett Smith, probably a lot. I think Derrick Henry must be up there. Uh, but Tajay Spears is going to have an opportunity here to be RB1 for the Titans. Derek, uh, I love DeAndre Hopkins getting his 1,000 yards. Again, that's another reason why the connection is there with Will Levis. He also has the mentor tag, so that means every wide receiver on the roster, mostly Traylon Burks, is going to get an XP boost as long as DeAndre Hopkins is there, which gives us some uh, some pretty nice value. Conquo uh, also has a start out tight end, has some upside defensively. Al Shire was a tackle machine. 163 tackles, 9 TFLs. Two, how does he not have a dev? He's on a normal dev. He did not get a roll with all those tackles. Seems a little harsh, if you ask me. Uh, pass rush, we got 11.5 sacks. Autry, 10.5 Harold Landry, 6 from Arden Key, 5.5 from Jeff Simmons, who did miss uh, some considerable time near the end of the season, I believe, uh, with an injury. Interceptions, nothing to really write home about. So... Okay. We did have Ryan Tannehill retire. A couple, you know, our long snapper and kicker as well. But that does free up a, a decent chunk of salary cap. All right, let's figure this out. Now, the it's always kind of the, uh, I don't want to say risk. But it's always kind of the thing you inherit when you would use the start today in the, you know, playoffs. Late in the playoffs like I did here. The good is obviously it gives you realistic stats, gives you a realistic starting point. The... The, the bad is you get, like, one option, one window to throw some money out there to try <laughs> try and re-sign some of these pending free agents. You swing and a miss, it is, it's not going to be great. So, I want to start. We got Jack Gibbons here. I, I think he has a, you know, young enough upside, maybe develop into uh, into a nice linebacker for us, especially if he rolls the dev trade. Derrick Henry, who we've agreed we will let walk. Sean Murphy bunting. I wish there was a little more green bar there, a little more interest in resigning. We'll throw him some money. He wants to go elsewhere. Hidden, you know, dev trade corner. Same with Caleb Farley. We will pick up his fifth-year option, even though he just cannot stay healthy whatsoever. In the context of Madden, should be healthy. 74 star dev, given the lack of depth in our secondary. I feel I feel decent about that. Al Shair, another guy. Give him a little more money. I, I think I'd be fine with having him at linebacker, even though he won't be able to go the full five years. He'll be good for the time being. That's probably it. So that's 123 mil to hit the open market, to get younger, to build around this new Bengals-type offense here in Tennessee. So for agency, we've maxed out our active negotiations. And honestly, if we get one or two guys to sign, I got to dip back in. There's still more guys I want to look at. Uh, but I'm trying to keep some sense of realism to this. We have our new defensive coordinator coming up from the Ravens. So why not bring some Ravens with them? We got Michael Pierce, who we're targeting to bring in as a rental nose tackle until we can draft a placement. We have Geno Stone, who had a breakout under Denard Wilson in Baltimore. I think he went away at five, six interceptions, something crazy like that. So that'd be, that'd be a big time upgrade. I'm looking at Bryce Huff at pass rush. There's a couple big names here. Josh Allen, Chase Young are kind of the top two. I tried, honestly, with both of them, and I threw, like, a best offer, very player-friendly, and we were barely making the top five. Doesn't mean we wouldn't get picked, but I wanted something that looked a little bit more clear-cut. Bryce Hoff, one of the most underrated pass rushers in the NFL, and I think he'll give us just a little bit more juice on the other side of Harold Landry than Arden Key. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, I'm kind of surprised he still has his star dev trait. We need a, another wide receiver, DeAndre Hopkins, Traylon Burks. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to prioritize wide receiver early in this upcoming draft. So it's, it's not a crazy amount of money given how much salary cap we have to get DPJ in for our wide receiver three. It's still in that area code as well that if we can find someone in the draft, it's not going to be too harsh if uh, he doesn't get a whole lot of snaps and maybe gets down to wide receiver four on the depth chart. And we got to try to beef up the offensive line here a little bit. So I'm going to look at John Runyon. And if we can get one of these guys aside, we're going to jump back into the center market and maybe bring back Brewer. And the board has fallen. We get Michael Pierce, Gino so We get all of our initial targets. I did want to go back and re-offer Brewer a contract. Just I, mean, I was surprised. I didn't think the market was going to kind of go as such 
or else I would have offered him a deal in season. But we'll go back for Brewer for a two-year deal. We'll get him to sign on the dotted line, and we handle we handle our business here in free agency. Not too shabby. Now, can, now I wonder if we can get a corner. That's kind of like the last. Murphy Bunting goes to Pittsburgh, and honestly, he was the best corner, at least for where we're at in this rebuild in terms of age, in terms of dev trait, in terms of upside. There's not a lot of like star dev guys like Jalen Watson, maybe 24 years old, 74, gives six foot two to play on the outside. Bryce Hall, 26, does have a dev trait. There's two teams offering him. Get Greedy Williams, who still somehow has some hype. Maybe we'll see if we can poach Bryce Hall here. I'm a three-year deal. Kinto is 29. Bump that up just a little bit because there are other offers in place. And let's see. It does give us the top spot. Pittsburgh's aggressive trying to... Hey, there we go. We'll throw a little... You know, there's a dog right there. All right, so what I've picked up on is you can't even rely on the mock drafts here when you do a start today type deal because you just get lied to. I've been lied to a couple times. So we got to let's just sit here till pick six. It's an early pick. We're going to have a great opportunity ahead of us with whatever players left. Myron Harrison, Latu. So really, Fashanu. All right, honestly, no quarterbacks gone. Has kind of uh, been a little bit of a bummer because a couple guys went that would very much been on our board. Where do we need to get better? Where should we prioritize? Well, here's a look at our roster after free agency, which, I mean, even some of our guys we signed in free agency is not going to necessarily deter us from going with particular players. Offensive line, I kind of shuffled around here. Running who we signed as a guard. We kicked a tackle. We kicked Redunds from guard to tackle. That being said, tackles could be a um, big-time position for us to go upgrade for sure. I think you could still, even with Donald People jones there's the... Got our pick at wide receiver. We after Marvin Harrison, Odunze could be pretty badass on the defensive side. We need a three-four defensive end, so D tackle defensive end. We need corner. Corner could be a big need. And we're gonna have a shot and pick at any corner available. No corners have gone off the board, but at pick six, we got to make the right call here, and we're not gonna go quarterback. So. We can go Malik Neighbors. Roma Dunze is there. Man, do they make Ro does he, he run like a 4 3? Ran a 4 2. That. Mmm. That sounds pretty fun. Brock Bowers, Joe Alt's there. Have used Joe Alt in a realistic rebuild not too long ago. I mean, I'm not going to get too stuck up over reusing a tackle if that is truly the best player available. Uh, same as Jerzon Newton used before. Byron Murphy out of Texas would very much fit a defensive end in our scheme. Three Bs and an A there for his scouting. Dallas Turner still on the board. Kind of, we already you know showed our hand there going past rush, paying Bryce Huff for corners. I mean, uh, you know, Terry and Arnold, top corner available. Is that worth the six pick? I, I think that's something also we need to consider. Is where we are picking. That is a a either S tier skill position player, tackle or an edge rusher. And I honestly think right now, even with the DPJ, I, I, I'm going to Adunze. Because DeAndre Hopkins is not going to go this full rebuild. We need to gamble that Traylon Burks is going to develop and not be this bust. Donovan Peoples-Jones is a role player. Odunze, however, has the ceiling, especially when he runs a 4-2-7 at 6'3", 215. He has the potential to be our long-term wide receiver run, franchise wide receiver run, out the box. For Will Levis. So that is where we're going to go. Rome Odunze. Welcome to Tennessee. So we come to the second round. I think our needs stay kind of similar. I think we go, is there an offensive lineman that is worthy? That can come in and be ideally a tackle. We have Jackson Power Johnson as a center. Dang, I just brought back a center. But he is a monster of a center. An absolute monster. He's about 30 pounds lighter than what he is. But a first, second round projected center. That could be plug and play. Brewer, who we brought back, kind of a role player. Jack Sawyer. Looks like he could be a dog. Just a little undersized for our front. Someone like Darius Robinson could fit that belt. I heard he's killing it at the Senior Bowl this week. Pretty good combine. Okay, I'm interested. We got... Uh, 
I mean, Devondre Sweat would be a hell of a, a hell of a nose tackle to build around. We got Mike Pierce on a one-year rental. Sweat can be, you know, the long-term play there for sure. I think that might be the pick. I think Devondre Sweat is calling our name the most right now, maybe more so than a TJ Tampa. We feel good about our safety room. So at pick six, we are going to go with a long-term nose tackle out of Texas, the monster Devondre Sweat. Coming in with decent athleticism, 78 acceleration, 70 speed, but a gigantic 97 strength. So you look at our draft recap, feel pretty good about the top end, right? Got what we were looking for, got some dev traits, got some ratings of Dunze 78. Overall, with the dev traits, 6'3", 95 speed, 95 acceleration, 85 catching, 94, just dog. Absolute dog. I mean, if you watch Washington play at any point last year, he was absolutely... One of the best players in all college football, regardless of position. I think this is going to go down in five years' time as one of the better wide receiver classes in the top first round with Odunze, with Neighbors, with Harrison. You got some other underrated players that I, I could absolutely see uh, being diamonds in the rough. Lad McConkey, Malachi Corley, others. There's others. There's other guys that are in the conversation. Troy Franklin could be a dog. Probably missing a couple other names, but a, a really, really strong wide receiver class. We got Tavondre Sweat, 74 with the hidden dev. Uh, outside of that, we didn't get any more hidden devs. We got good role players. Got Frank Gore Jr., DJ James, 70 corner in the seventh round. Abog B from uh, Alabama, just adding some 3 4 defensive end up. Same with Jordan Bircher, 70 overall. From Oregon, was four, I think he was the number one recruit. If not, I know he was a five star back in the day in South Carolina. And then we got Ray Davis. Used to be a Temple Owl. And then he went to, Va I think he traded for like seven times. But he's a 70 overall. So I love the base ratings. But I think for Sweat, who is going to learn behind um, behind the veteran nose tackle this year that we just signed, I think we get a Dunze, who is going to get thrown to the wolves and expect to be that immediate deep threat monster for Will Levis in this new look Cincinnati offense. I feel I feel real good. Because I'll tell you what, this Cincinnati offense can facilitate two to three thousand yard receivers. I've seen it done. And that's what we're going to need to do, especially with life beyond Derrick Henry. Here we go. We got a great first impression by DeAndre Hopkins and what value he's going to be able to add to the team. Maybe I prefer that to be Odunze, but he's taking Traylon Burks, who is a player that we need to continue to develop, given the state of our wide receiver room. The man that was supposed to come in and replace A.J. Brown. Massive expectations. At least he's getting a little, little extra tutoring by one of the greatest wide receivers of all time in DeAndre Hopkins. After year zero offseason, this is where the squad looks. This is where it differentiates. This is where we start. We have Redunz at left tackle. We have Runyon at right tackle. Two new starting tackles. Are they going to be long-term plays here? Probably not. And really my only like lasting thought here on the offensive line is we got to get Andre Dillard's pretty rough-looking contract off the books as soon as we can. Uh, Drome Dunce is going to be wide receiver two. We got DPJ there. We have Mr. Traylon Burks. Now, what I did learn from the Cincinnati playbook is the slot wide receiver eats. So what my plan is, is I'm going to have Traylon Burks play slot for half the year. I'm going to have Odunze play slot for half the year. Those are the two guys we want to develop and grow. So we're going to give them peak targets, kind of split it between the two, because I don't I don't want Odunze at wide receiver two just to be the forgotten guy that gets like 600 yards, kind of wet farts it a little bit. But I do want to try to both have my cake and eat it too by having both Traylon Burks and Odunze be featured parts of this offense here in the sim. So I'm going to do that at probably about week seven, week eight, switch it over to Odunze. The defense, got a couple faces here. We have Birch, the uh, kind of value pick that we found. He is going to actually start at defensive end on the other side of Jeff Simmons. We have Pierce. Sweat is going to get on the field uh, in, in these sets here. The only thing that's annoying right now is like you clearly need Simmons. I think in a perfect world, you could have Jeff Simmons be the right defense, uh, the rush defensive tackle. Um, and then we could have Huff and Landry in because, we, you know, we paid decent money for Huff. And, you know, I just, you can't play him over Landry. You can't play him over Simmons. So he's kind of stuck in that weird purgatory. Hopefully we run a lot of base defense so he gets his reps. Because we got Huff and Landry, Shair and Gibbons in the inside. We got Geno Stone, who expectations are high. He's going to be able to play at that level that he set with the Baltimore Ravens under Mr. Denier, we have Bryce Hall, who we uh, we got kind of late in free agency. He's going to start in the slot. So I think overall, am I expecting playoffs? Probably not. But am I expecting a competitive roster? Absolutely. So at the midway point-ish, um, not great. 3-8 rhymes. Offensively, though, the passing offense is great. 
feel pretty good about that. The defense. Uh, Denard Wilson having some issues. We do got a breakout at wide receiver. I don't know who this is going to be for. I'm going to guess. I mean, we did just move Odunze back into the slot, so it could be. Yeah, that is the focal point of the offense. I believe that means he has a star dev. Maybe a little bit of a, of a spoiler there. Um, let's look at some contracts. Then we'll sim and see if Odunze can go up dev. We have $67 million. We don't need Pierce. We got Devondre Sweat. We have DeAndre Hopkins. I, I'm cool with D-Hop here for two years. But I think the low interest kind of makes it so maybe it's time we move on. Because we'd have to severely overpay to keep him here in the building. Uh, Stonehouse, one of the best punters in the league. We'll see if we can get him here for three years. We have the fifth year option on Traylon Burks, which we will pick up. You know, I would love in a perfect world, maybe flip those interests between Michael Pierre. We got that nice little yellow bar on DeAndre Hopkins. Maybe I can make it happen, but clearly he's probably at a spot where it's like, yeah, I mentored Adunze. I mentored Traylon Burks. I'm 32. Let me go to a contender. I can win a Super Bowl in the next year or two, and I got to respect that. And our offense struggles, and I don't even I don't even want to I don't even want to open that. Actually, well, there's a chance maybe Odunze had 150 yards and a loss. Nope, he did not. So now we just made him feel sad. As year one that comes to a close, we feel pretty good about the offense. Not good at all about the defense, which is a little bit of a bummer for sure. We go five wins, which is actually going to put us in a decent spot. Maybe the best spot we've had so far in realistic rebuilds as it relates to the 2025 draft. Because for whatever. Reason the realistic rebuild so far this year, year two, we've been good, good enough that like at worst we're picking in the late teens. However, it looks like we're definitely gonna have a top ten pick this season, if not better. One, two, three, four. We have the number five pick in the draft, which will likely give us a, a great opportunity to get an absolute baller, be it one of the top studs at offensive tackle or an absolute game changer on the defensive side of the ball where the defense needs so much love. But we got immediate... Okay, first off, shout out to Derrick Henry. He's on living his best life there. Got to actually probably should go see where he landed. But look at the passing offense. Will Levis, second. We have Romo Dunze, the rookie, second. I knew we would get results like this in a perfect scenario. And that's exactly what we got with this Bengals-infused offense. Second in yards, second in touchdowns. For Will Levis, interceptions a little high. But I don't think that is going to trump a potential dev trade. As he's on a normal, but gigantic growth and development up to a 78 overall. And I do think my plan this offseason is to fire the OC and bring in someone with QB Guru so we can give him that little extra push. Just because he's a little bit older at 25, come the year four or five of this rebuild, his XP is going to be it's going to be tough for him to grow and develop. So I do think getting someone that will give him those quick boosts is going to be a priority for me in this offseason. Uh, Tajay Spears gets like the bare minimum of a solid running back sim season, 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. Receiving the rookie, Rome Odunze, 89 catches, 1,400 yards, 16 touchdowns. Pretty insane. 9 and 8 for D Hop, 850 and 5 for Burks, which is acceptable. Aconqua was 750 and 4. Really decent numbers there for a tight end. On the defensive side, Shair, Gibbons, and Hooker all go over 100 tackles. Gibbons with 12 TFLs. Sacks, 8.5 for Harold Landry, 6.5 for Jeff Simmons. Fine numbers. Uh, Huff with 4.5 for four their 11 TFLs for the rookie Birch, who actually like, low-key might be able to get a dev trade out of that because he played so much as a normal dev. Uh, we got four picks from Caleb Farley. Love seeing a little bit of resurgence there. So Denard Wilson getting the most of the former first-round pick, which is pretty cool. Only one interception for Geno Stone, so his production kind of fell off a cliff from what he did last year in Baltimore. MVP goes to Lamar Jackson. Will Levis, year one with Callahan making the MVP shortlist. Odunze, second, uh, sorry, third in Offensive Player of the Year. Cool. That's that's a dub. He gets, uh, clearly, he's going to be Offensive Rookie of the Year. Elite production for Odunze. Uh, for the rest of the year, he also gets Wide Receiver of the Year, which is, I mean, just dominating, hitting the ground running. So that is outstanding for him. Very happy with Will Levis. Happy that... You know, we sucked enough to get a top five pick, so we're going to be able to get another exciting player for the squad. But, man, oh, man, we are... I'm going to be very frustrated if we can't improve that defense somehow, some way. Number 30, we're the worst! I'm fine with the the rushing offense being that bad. If you told me I'll have the 32nd rushing offense, but Tajay Spears still getting 1,010 touchdowns and our passing offense is S tier, I'll take that every other week. But the defense, it has to be better. Now, Duse gets a gigantic three upgrade points at the end of the season 
Let's also peep the dev. I'll put I'll put one into physical. I mean, he is also a physical style player. So maybe we take advantage of this little bonus and pump it into the scheme fit there, which gets him up to an 85 base overall with that very nice superstar dev. So he was a star dev out of the draft class, but gets a very much deserved superstar. And honestly, I might, even though he's not a slot, I might just have to keep him the slot so that this becomes a little bit of a Rome Odunze rebuild. I need that production to stay up. Anytime Dallas loses in the Super Bowl, that's okay with me. The Jets win MVP Aaron Rodgers probably goes out. Uh, final hurrah type deal. But looking at our squad, we know Odunze made the jump from star up to a superstar dev. Take a look at the rest of the offense. Will Levis makes the jump from normal to a star, but definitely want to be conscientious of those interceptions. 15th a little high, so let's cut that out next season. I thought Conquo might have had a shot. Uh, you know, top five tight ends usually do get a chance of an increase. Must have just been on the outskirts of that, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer. But I wasn't really expecting any other devs on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, what do we got? Devondre Sant was hidden dev. He popped as a star. No dev for Birch. No dev for McCreary. I thought he might have had a shot. No dev for Farley. Thought with the interceptions, he might have had a shot. We did get a dev on Jack Gibbons, who goes from normal up to a star. But everyone else maintains their dev trait, but... You know, maybe given the fact that we have the 32nd ranked defense, we should count it lucky that we had no dev trait regression. But we got to do this. We got to handle business here. We are going to fire you because we need an offensive coordinator with a QB guru, which we got one here in Keith Wright. I recommend this. This is a tip and trick anytime. I mean, if you want to have it a little more challenging, by all means, but if you are embracing a quarterback situation, that is not the best. You don't have like that guy that's going to be a 99x factor. Absolutely make your life easier by hiring an offensive coordinator with QB Guru. You're going to be able to get plus three throw power, plus three short, medium, and deep accuracy, which is gigantic. Absolutely gigantic. Because it's, you know, right there is like, what? Like a plus two, plus three to your quarterback's base overall immediately. First piece of business is to get rid of Andre Dillard. A nice little tipping point of getting out of a pretty rough looking contract, but all of our attention now is definitely going to shift towards potentially landing a franchise tackle with that top five pick. So, going into free agency, some interesting names, especially along the offensive line. Somehow, someone like Jason Kelsey is going into like year three, where every time I did an Eagles video, he retires the first offseason. Um, but we're looking here at Wyatt Teller. Maybe we come in with it with a better deal because I, I just think he can go the full four. He's going to be a guard. We need a right guard. We need a right guard. We need an offensive tackle. We have John Runyon. Probably keep him at right tackle. So I think we can get wide tackle. That would be huge. I think we look towards. I mean, Deion Dawkins is available at left tackle, but at thirty-one, you know, where is he going to be? Your four and five. He's probably going to be what, 77, 78. Might be better suited going a little bit younger at that spot. Um, I did consider maybe signing or trying to go after a Joe Tunio Batonio and then kicking Peter Skaronsky back to tackle, which is where he played in college. Mm. Maybe. Let's see. I'll do if I can get both these tackles, I'll do that. I'll kick Skaronsky back to offensive tackle. So that we can invest our top five pick in not an offensive lineman. Because that would be uh, a little more exciting, potentially. Uh, we could use a corner. I see Razul Douglas there, but at 30, I uh, feel like he's probably getting pretty close to falling off a cliff there in terms of production. So we will we will be we'll be a little conscientious there in the second end. We'll see if we can go all in on the offensive line here. Get a couple old dogs and kick Skaronsky back to tackle. So our offensive line went from questionable. To now Skronsky at left tackle, Tooney superstar at left guard, Teller superstar at right guard. You know, if we get some of these boosts off, I mean, that's 76 for Runyon there at right tackle. That's more than serviceable enough. That I mean, at minimum, we could at least roll that into when we get the generated draft classes and maybe get a tackle then. But our offensive line went from a question mark to undoubtedly a strength here to protect Will Levis and company and keep this offense rolling. Let's take a look at mock draft five just to see where the players are kind of falling. And... Uh, I was going to say, Burden or Travis Hunter are the interesting ones that I would have loved fall to me. But sitting at five, Hill Perkins, that's an edge rusher. That could help us get more sacks. Walter Nolan, 3-4 defensive end, would be a fit. Um, it looks like 
the tackle. We're going to have a shot at either tackle. If we want to, Kelvin Banks, Will Campbell, both those guys are, are absolute dog. Where is Campbell? Way down there. Very interesting. Maybe the value is not presenting itself. Uh, I do need to update this draft class a little bit. Vaki is in the 2024 draft right now. But this draft class still holds up to 99% of the available players. So sitting where we're at, maybe we'll do a little extra scouting here. Get Perkins. We'll scout Nolan. Maybe. Maybe Banks. Maybe one of the tackles. Because, I mean, that would be a hell of an off. Even with Runyon there, right? He's replaceable. And if we go in one offseason and go ta franchise tackle, have two of them hopefully. Skronsky, another one. Double up on the guards. That'd be pretty badass. But, oh, man, I was hoping we had to have a shot at Travis Hunter or Luther Bird. Those are, in my opinion, the top big dogs here. I mean, Perkins is a stud. Don't get me wrong. We get Kelvin Banks. Scout him. We'll scout Nolan. Nolan might be the best pure fit for our squad, given our front. We'll see. Because, we have, you know, for Perkins, we have Harold Andrew. We have Bryce Huff. Um, and if I remember, I don't know. It's a, it's this is a very very tough call for who we should get. Maybe we'll trust the scouting. So let's see. Yeah, first, first overall, the Giants go out and get was it Ruben Bain? Okay, we just can't trust the mock drafts anymore. I guess Perkins gone, Calvin Banks gone. Luther Bird, if, if this is Travis Hunter, they just got rid of the four fucking fun guys. I would have traded up. I knew all those guys were going to be gone. So now we're sitting here looking like an absolute asshole with the players that are available. Will Campbell. We can go tackle. That'd be a left tackle. That'd be our right tackle. Walter Nolan. I think it's between Bain and Nolan, and I think Nolan's probably got to be our guy. 6'4", 290, double A, elite, elite, yeah, it's good. Yeah, all right, here we go. Get some help, some legit help on the other side. Uh, even though Jordan Birch was solid, this is a different level in Walter Nolan. Five-star recruit, big time. I believe he he's in the portal right now. Did he go to Ole Miss? Was he an Ole Miss guy? Ole Miss spent a trillion dollars. They spent, like, the American military budget on transfers in the portal. But big time dog for us. We'll move him to DN. Hopefully his rating doesn't tank. I think El Shair, another replaceable guy on our squad. So I'm gonna look at Jalen Walker, the linebacker out of Georgia, to come in. Him and Gibbons, I think, can be our future in the middle of this defense. So that kind of a top tackle that I was considering in the second round, still available in the third round. Josh Connerly out of Oregon. No dev trait, but maybe his rating gives him a shot here to compete with John Runyon. Look at our draft recap, man. I wish I was so hard. I'm not saying all it's harsh, but I went with the realistic approach for my ratings because it's just is. There are late round steals, late round studs. They're harder, harder to find maybe than than they should be. We got uh, depth tight end. We got DJU to be back up quarterback. Diego pounds at tackle. Connerly 68, a little bit on the light side, but Walker there 71 hidden dev, 77 for Nolan. That is a stud. Happy with those picks even though the first four were brutal. Before we take a look at the team year two, one thing I wanted to do last year, I just forgot, is where did Derrick Henry end up? He was dominant last season, and this feels like a, a traitor move. Derrick Henry is dominating now for the Houston Texans. Come on. Going into year two for the Tennessee Titans, we feel pretty good about this squad. The massive additions on the offensive line. The fact that Romo Dunze is now a bona fide wide receiver. One, Levis... Hit the ground running. Felt great in the scheme last year. I'm very optimistic. This offense, yet again, is going to be top five at worst. The defense, though, can only go up. They were the 32nd ranked defense in the NFL last year. So we went out and we improved. We invested, spending a top five pick on Walter Nolan, who's going to be on that D-line, at Tavondre Sweat, and Jeffrey Simmons. We got a little bit of depth here in linebacker. We're not going to feel that just quite yet. Uh, I'm not going to propel him to a starter overall shot year, but it's a nice developmental successor type plan that we got going on there but i definitely want to see the the, the pass rushers get home it's a three four we know but somebody who's going to be our double digit guy is it going to be landry it's gonna be huff is it gonna be simmons is it gonna be nolan kind of hope it's nolan because i drafted him but 
nowhere else to go but up for this defense. So the midway point of year two, and we're five and three. Sitting atop the AFC South. We have a breakout defensive back ahead of our week nine game. As Amani Hooker looking to make a jump from star up to a superstar dev. He's at that age where better late than never. I suppose he's 27, going to be 28. So getting pretty close to his ceiling. So it'll be pretty nice to get that little extra XP boost at his older age. We do lose, unfortunately, which probably is going to mean a no dev. So it's all bad news. So let's strike a little bit of good news here. Let's hammer out some contract extensions on our bye week. We have a lot of money. Well, not a lot of money. We have enough money. I like a Conquo as a developmental tight end. We'll get him for four years. Locked in for the remainder of the rebuild. We have Hooker, who did just lose his dev trait, or lose out on a potential dev trait. We'll see if he gets here for a three-year deal. Keep him until he's 30. Don't have to worry about any regression. Caleb Farley led the team in interceptions last year. Finally starting to live up to the billing of a first-round pick, which is nice. I think Roger McCreary is a dev trait away from looking incredible. So we're going to retain him as well. I mean, none of these are big contracts at all. We got Brewer at center, I think serviceable enough. Let's get into at least 29. Wants a little more money. I think we can definitely make ends meet there to get him happy with that contract. We'll pick up the fifth year option for Skorodsky, and we'll roll into the offseason, probably with around $30 million, so we could still make a big splash move if the opportunity presents itself. All right, we need, it. We need an interject right here. We got a nice one over the Rams. We get a breakout scenario, which we will see who that's for. But I said, who's going to get the sacks on this team? Jeff Simmons, five sacks. Two weeks earlier, another player of the week performance with three sacks. So, I mean, I'm going to be honest. It probably doesn't mean Walter Nolan, our first-round pick, top-five pick, is going to have big-time numbers if Jeff Simmons is the guy that's eating. But if that's what it takes to get Jeff Simmons to eat, spending a five, you know, I don't know, he's getting double-teamed, whatever you want to kind of, however you want to break it down. Walter Nolan is freeing up. Jeff Simmons to go off, and that within itself is worth a top five pick if Simmons is going to be one of those 15, 16, 17 sack a year type players. We get a breakout scenario here against the five and eight Jags for Okonkwo, the tight end that we hammered out a long term contract extension for. So we can get onto a superstar. That would be huge and a brutal one point loss to the Jags and another missed dev trade opportunity. We got a realistic turnaround here for the Titans. And by the end of year two, we are 10 and seven. We did not win the South Tide with the Colts, which stings, but we made the playoffs. And we get to play the defending Super Bowl champions in the first round. But look at the look at the growth there. Offense, top 10. I said, you know, we can stay top 10. Closer to top 5, which we did. Our defense was 32nd. We are now up to 21st. Overall, though, 17th in the league. So that is outstanding, realistic trajectory growth for the Tennessee Titans here in year 2. Which is all you can ask for. Taking a look at Will Levis, strong year, maybe not as good as the year before, but 4,200 yards, 30 touchdowns to uh, 10 interceptions. So we have cut down on the interceptions a little bit, which is great. Spears got his 1,000 yards, which I like to see. Romo Dunze, dog, 13, almost 1,400 yards, 7 touchdowns, almost 1,000. I would love to get 2,000 yard receivers and average that out here between the two, but Burks did get 11 touchdowns, which is nice. Conquo with decent production there for a tight end as well defensively 128 tackles for Gibbons maybe this year he will not be denied a uh, a gigantic depth maybe a pro bowl thrown in there uh 10 sacks for Jeff Simmons now the fact that he got five six seven and he got eight of those 10 in two games maybe a little more consistency would be great 13 TFL seven sacks for Walter Nolan the rookie great numbers but again it's just your classic three four sim defense that don't get sacks kind of is what it is five picks for McCreary He's on that normal dev. If that does not give him a star dev trade increase, I don't know what could. At this point, Hooker with three. Farley, who's been great in this rebuild with three as well. Very quick look at the yearly awards before we get into the playoffs. Dak wins the MVP. Quickly looking for some a Tennessee Titans. Dang, Nolan at number three for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Okay, fine, it's fine. A little bit more of a, of a team effort this year. Got the Jets. Winnable game. But they are more experienced. And they handle business. 36-26. 0-1 our first game. McCreary gets his sixth pick of the year. But we had no answers. For Brees Hall. Damn. Look at that free agency. I'm glad that we don't have an insane amount. Because it's not a good role. Unless we really want to like you know bring back Kevin Byard. Who has just a grossly inflated Madden rating still. Tell you know. There's a reason why Philly got him for a fifth-round pick. I understand now, Titan fans. Thibodeau could be interesting, but, I mean, 
really not that big of a discrepancy between his base rating and Bryce Huff's rating, even though Huff has done absolutely nothing. That's more of a scheme than his player. So I think we're going to take this almost 50 mil and just, just roll it over in the next year. So our recruiting, scouting, whatever you want to call it this year, our focus was corner. I found a wide receiver that I think could be pretty juicy. Marquise Duckworth coming to compete with DPJ, AD for running B release, 6-1. Ran a 4-3, maybe not as S-tier of an athlete, but for a second, third rounder, could be good. But I scouted corner. And let me tell you when we found ourselves a guy. And uh, not a surprise that he's a baller. He's 6-4. He has three Bs in an A, A in man coverage. And athletically speaking... Pretty damn good for a 6'4 corner. Elite acceleration, elite jumping. You may want to see great, at least great in that speed. It's only good. But that's the guy we want. We want Woodward. He'd come in. We'd put probably McCreary in the slot. We'd go Farley on the outside and just, just bump up, you know, him into that spot. So I don't know where he's going, though, range-wise. Probably ahead of where we're picking. He's going 21, and we pick at... This is a great opportunity for me to throw my goddamn controller at the wall. This mock draft is not believable. And I can't get this guy. And he goes right before me, for an example. I'm going to be furious. But if we could trust this mock draft. Consolation prize is not brutal. Jamichael Vincent, three Bs and an A. It's not as fast. At least we get a dev trait. But you just know that guy was an X Factor or Superstar minimum. God damn it! Now I'm shook, but my board is shot. Had a plan, had a blueprint I wanted to follow. Um, I guess we just go BPA. Stack the best player available. It's probably going to be Zach Hartwell here at a Louisville. It'd be a D-end in our scheme. Don't really need one. I mean, I guess if Jeff Simmons gets up there in age, I don't know. But he's just, he's BPA. He'll stack BPAs. Wish he had a dev trait. All right, so take a look at the draft recap. Consolation corner ends up being still pretty dang solid. 76 with a hidden dev, 71. We got a 70 running back, Taven Bailey. Got some good speed out of Houston. And then in the fourth round, a nice dev tight end, Golson. To play behind a Conquo with a dev trade blocking tight end. You know, these are the guys uh, you like to look for blocking tight end with some good strength to them. But we got to look at the corner. When did the corner we want go? He went 18. So we wanted him at 20. He went 18. We ended up at a two point discrepancy. Just please be star dev or no. Yes! Okay. Silver lining right there. I would have, I'd much rather. 76 hidden dev, then 78 normal. It's a travesty that this guy, a prospect built like this, didn't get a dev trade. All right, we're at the midway point. My cat wants to say what's up. Say what's up, Riggs. Go over there. What's up, Riggs? He's chilling. He's in the way. Awesome. Well, we just won week seven. We are first place. We got it. We got a player of the week, Will Levis, 400 yards, four touchdowns. He did have two turnovers. Cat, come on, help me out, buddy. Come on, bots, go to your bed. We got a breakout wide receiver here, head of week eight. For the love of God, get out the way. And I'm going to say it is probably uh, Trey Lumberks, would be my guess. Oh, it's DP chair, wide receiver three. We'll see if, let's be honest, he's, there's not a chance in hell he's hitting this. But we will... Uh, we also have another breakout here. This one here is at least a free XP boost because it means someone is inspiring somebody else. And this is Traylon Burks. Happy about Rome Odunze. You know what? We are going to praise Traylon Burks. He's doing a great job. Came a long way from being a guy that most Titan fans think is going to be a first-round bust. I think he's doing a... He's, doing a, you know, he's been a, almost a 1,000-yard guy, so we'll get 2,500 XP. We get another breakout for Burks. I think that's a little bit more attainable as he is our starting outside wide receiver one. But it is a, uh, it is, you know, it's a difficult, it's a difficult scenario for those guys in the sim. I think for our scouting focus here, I feel pretty good at corner. There goes the cat. Um, 
go wide receiver just to, just to see if we can find like an X factor or something like that. Maybe that's like a missing piece. We got to get, you know, Burks is a, is a role player. Maybe we need to accept that. Odunze's a stud, but maybe we got to get another stud. Maybe that's what we're missing. We got to get that T. Higgins to go with our Jamar Chase. So we lose. With only putting up 14 points, I don't even think it's worth interacting with both of these devs, but you got to take the good with the bad. I'm not even going to do the second one. There's no chance he hit it, right? There's 0% chance with only 14 points. I mean, he still could get a buck 50, I guess, in a loss. But he unfortunately did not. Very disappointing. But we're going to take that disappointment and we're going to look at handing some people some money because we did not pay or sign anyone in free agency. Because we don't get the fifth-year option on Will Levis. So we're going to have to pay Will Levis all along. We'll start with Tajay Spears, give him a four-year deal. And he told us to go uh, fuck ourselves. So I appreciate that. Um, I mean, we just, we got to, honestly, we got to pay. Well, there's some guys I want to keep, obviously. But you got you to gotta get the contract with Will Levis handled, and then you pay everyone else. What a dick. Sorry. Oh, short. Sure, wasn't recorded. That's awesome. I did get Traylon Burks to resign. Kind of feel like everybody else. I mean, maybe we do the do a solid here, and throw Harold Landry. I mean, he's still playing. I mean, he's just lost. He's regressing down there a little bit. Needs to be kind of the jump off point for some of these players. I, I think we go Spears and Levis, and then we take the remainder to the open market in the off season. All right, another loss. Unfortunately, luckily no one's really taking command of the South. And before we take this breakout defensive back. Let's come back to the table. I don't want to pay a whole lot for Spears because, let's be honest, the running backs are... There's only so much value a running back has in our system. That is me more so just sticking with a guy that's homegrown. And we'll go up to 19.5, 18.5 for Will Levis. There we go. So that's why right around $100 million. Reasonable. And then we'll go into the offseason needing a new edge, needing a new right tackle, needing a new ed two new edges. Honestly, we're going to completely refurnish the pass rush i mean this one of those ones huff is interested it's one last hole uh, he's probably gonna be the best edge rusher there so let's pre let's preemptive that so we did focus scout wide receiver so that could be our dpj replacement we have walker uh out of georgia to be our al shayir replacement actually we will actually might as well make walker our starter now as we're going with them forward we're good at hall because we just drafted a corner so yeah it's gonna honestly be right tackle and another edge rusher and we got to break out DB. Please don't be Hall because we're letting him walk. And it is Geno Stone. Okay. Man that we brought here because of the defensive coordinator from the Ravens. And we'll see if we can get Geno Stone up to a super star dev. Safeties are one of the easier positions to hit on your dev trade scenarios. I don't know why that's the case. But it's a low scoring game which bodes well. Let's go Geno Stone. First big free agency signing back in year zero. Now a superstar death. We close out year three. Make the playoffs again. Our first AFC South a title at 11 and six. And we finish with a top five offense. The number two overall defense. Top 10 in sacks. Really good in the red zone. Takeaways could be better. But ultimately, uh, we've come a lot. Everything's up. Even our running, rushing offense has never been great. That's respectable. So take a look at Will Levis, hell of a year, top five quarterback, 4,400 yards, 35 touchdowns, eight picks, might have a shot off of this production, make the jump from star to superstar. Uh, might, you know, might be a little lucky to get that one, but it's within the realm of possibility. Top five, that is on the bubble of hitting that. Uh, you know, on brand year for Tajay Spears, would love a thousand there, but all in all, I'm not going to be too upset considering how much of our offense is passing. And we got 2,000 yard receivers, 89 Catches 1,200 yards, 15 touchdowns for Adunze, who's been a monster. 86 catches, almost 1,100 yards, 4 touchs for Burks. 9-7 and seven for DPJ, respectable for Oconquo. you will love to see it defensively. Gibbons and Walker, 100 tackles each. 8.5 sacks from Walter Nolan. Get, oh, I just don't want to bring it up every time, but you know what it is. You know why the sacks are low. Uh, interceptions, uh, I just kind of hope. I mean, a little bit of transition move McCree from outside of the slot. And he gets four less interceptions, so maybe we botch that a little bit. Vincent, our hidden dev first round pick. Star dev, that's still better than the normal on the corner that we thought was the one that got away. Looking at the yearly awards, MVP goes to Josh Allen. Will Levis, just outside the top five in the AFC. Yeah, Pacheco must be going off. He's got that award a couple times. Vincent down there at eight. Gotta see, did the, did the guy for the Cardinals get it? Where'd he go? 
Didn't even make it. The corner that we, we were trying to target. So it's not like no harm, no foul there. So rest of the individual awards, not seeing any Titans, but we are a team here. We are not a team of individuals. We are a, individuals that make up a team that wants to shock the world here and get their first playoff victory. Year three of a five-year rebuild against the 12-5 and five Bengals. It is Bengals versus Bengals playbook, and it is fucking, oh, it's very close. 27-24, we fall. At home. Damn. Close, man. We are we are right there. Dunze had a great game. Conco the Tud defensively. We just. I think I'm going to interject because we got two years left. We don't. I I I don't know. Maybe people that are in in the know here for Titans. I don't know if they're going to run a three four or not. I'm assuming they are right because we gave them the Ravens defensive playbook. But. Um, I don't know why I can't remember his name right now. He was the DB coach for Philadelphia. Philadelphia runs a 4-3. A so, you know, I, I feel like he has a little bit of experience between a 3-4 scheme and a 4-3 scheme. Why don't we why don't we move to a 4-3 to kind of close this out and see if that just gives us a little bit more juice on the defensive side of the ball. So with Coach Denard Wilson, we are going to now take from his coaching tree and go from Baltimore, where he spent one season... And we're going to put him to Philadelphia's defense, where he spent, I don't know how many years he was in Philly. Two years? Three years? And just see, maybe that's the winning, because the offense has been great. Let's see if this is something to solve the defense. Unfortunately, one of our bigger free agents has retired, maybe a little earlier than expected. Joe Tooney, our superstar left guard, retires after 11 seasons. So that is yet again another hole we got to try to fill this offseason. So here is how our team is going to look. I mean, we'll look at offense real quick. As far as dev traits are concerned, we did get the superstar on Levis. We did get an X-Factor on Rome Odunes. No one else went up dev, however, but the superstar for Levis is obviously huge at this point because he's at that an awkward age. He's 28. That's where quarterbacks start to, like, just peak. Like, that, they're not going to – he's not going to, you know, you know, you play Madden. We'll make him a team captain. Maybe that's a nice little bump up for him. But the, the superstar dev is very much deserved playing like a top five quarterback. Uh, for the most part, Dunze, one of the best wide receivers in the league. I mean, full shot here for the last two years to get to him to a 99x factor, which is huge for the premier player that we drafted. But on the offensive side, we're definitely going to need a guard to replace Tooney. And I think exploring a right tackle will be in our best interest, potentially as well with DPJ hitting the open market, a wide receiver. That's where we focused our scouting on, though. So it'd be, it'd be nice to you know not spend that in the free agency spot draft maybe in the first round a wide receiver handle the o-line maybe we probably could get a guard to generate a draft class so maybe get a guard second round like wide receiver first round guard second round get a tackle maybe in free agency the defense going from a 3-4 to a 4-3 i'm going to gamble that walter nolan at 290 pounds x factor which he just got his x factor he was a superstar you know like like a cam jordan you know, I think what's came to her, like 287 plays 4-3 defensive end. So I, I feel like Nolan can easily make that transition. Athletically speaking, you know, 90 acceleration, 90 strength. I don't think he's going to have any problem playing that role. I think he's scheme flexible. But, I mean, it makes sense. Though. Sweat and Simmons at D-tackle. He took Huff from outside linebacker down to defensive end. We're going to be losing Landry in free agency. That's fine because we have Gibbons and Walker going to primarily be our two linebackers on the field. Hooker, Stone lost his dev trait. Which is a bummer. Superstar. I mean, hey, that's, you know, we got the strict, realistic rebuild settings. So you do get dev trait regression a lot more than in, you know, our regular rebuilds. That is the added challenge that we throw to ourselves here. But, I mean, the secondary stays the same. I think this defense will be able to quickly cope with the scheme change. And really for free agency, I mean, you know, we feel good defensively. I think we're going to spend all of our money offensively. And I think we are very, very close for being Super Bowl contenders here in the AFC. I'm going to try Spurs on the O-line again. I got Ragdown, put him to guard. We got Stanley, competitive offer there from the Commanders. Maybe we try to up it a little. Because I, mean, I just feel like at this point we're not going to spend the salary cap. I don't think we have a, a crazy impending free agency getting ready to happen. So if we can get Ragnow at guard, Stanley at our right tackle spot, that is going to be one of the best offensive lines in all of football. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, so for the draft here is look the cat look he made an appearance that's his favorite spot like right in the back of my chair it's good until he shits his pants you know what i'm saying 
Uh, we handed our scouting. I got a wide receiver. that looked good value because obviously we're picking a little bit later on. Carlos Estrada, 6'5". First round talent. We got a offensive lineman. Guard. So we can keep Ragnow. It'd, be, it'd suck for Brewer, but we keep Ragnow at center. And potentially Jamie English, who honestly, that's just the, one of the highest bench presses I've seen for a guard in a minute. And the fact that he has a run block, he's probably pretty good. A lead block, a run block, finesse, a run block, a pass block, finesse. Like, stud, don't know. You know, first, second round. Again, I'm just more so trying to find guys that might be available at the ass end of the first round. Also got another corner here in Kevin Wilson, who I scouted, 6'4". Double B, double C. Doesn't look incredible. But, you know, maybe gives us a little bit of safety flexibility. I don't know necessarily uh, the expiry date on uh, Amani Hooker. He might start regressing. Maybe want a younger corner for year five. Or younger DB in general for year five. Dare we look at the mock draft to get our hopes up, potentially. Would love that guard to be there. But if he's not, so be it. Is what it is. And where is he projected to go? Yeah, he's going to be gone. <sighs> I don't know. Just not, you know, it's one of them deals. We're after Walter Nolan. After this, this is one of those rebuilds where the drafts aren't the best. They're not bad, but we're also not getting all-star type drafts. Like, even last year, we missed out on our corner, and it wasn't like Karma was on our side, and the, the, the blind pick corner ended up being ridiculously good. Um... Okay, is our wide receiver still on the board? He is the top wide receiver available. So we will see what Carlos Estrada. I mean, that's, you know, it's it, nice you know, for be 6'5", 220, be a playmaker, not a physical archetype. Could be interesting. And with the scheme change, we still technically need another linebacker. So we're going to look here at Kenny Easley, I think, should be the call. If not him, I mean, there's just... I don't know. I wish I wish I had a little more scout. I wish I scouted at least a couple linebackers here. If we don't go easily, we got Jeff Tiller. So his B coverage, athletically speaking, you know, at four six, a little scared. Maybe this Marcus Allen. He's undersized at 5'11", 224. A zone C tackle, elite speed, elite so four five one. He ran up. So I mean, at the, I'll might as well go with who the better athlete is. Four four five, six seven four two. Four four five six seven four two four four five six seven four two four four nine six eight four. All right, we gotta go. We gotta go with the we'll go with the shorty, the undersized dog. You know he's gonna be a stud. You know he's gonna have a hidden dev. You just know it. Let's go. Take a little sneaky poo at our draft class. Estrada seventy five hidden dev. Allen seventy three hidden dev. We got Miles Connor out of Auburn. Get a never seventy plus. Wide receiver, there's many of these guys you could stack in a draft, especially kind of just filling out our wide receiver with them better, you know, 6'6", six, six, 90 speed, 95 agility. We got some freaks in this draft class. We start year four for the Tennessee Titans and our squad very close. I assume sooner than later this season, we will break that 90 overall team threshold, which is a great barometer for team success. There's some rebuilds we don't eclipse that. It's not necessarily a must-have. To say that you're going to go on and win a Super Bowl, but once you get you know you get that 90 plus, you feel pretty good. Especially we're going to be 90 plus for the next two years straight. Two swings at the Super Bowl with a 90 plus squad. I feel good with those odds. So they look quickly at the offense. Uh, probably didn't make Frank Ragnow the happiest signing him to center money and then moving him right away to guard. That's the nature of the business, and uh, that gives us one of the best offensive lines in the league. We still have, obviously, homegrown talent. Conquo, Traylon Burks, Tajay Spears, Will Levis doing the thing. Roma Dunze has been the star of the show on the offensive side of the ball. We need to replace the star power that Derrick Henry took with him when we decided not to re-sign him and just move on and end that era. And Roma Dunze stepped into that role and has absolutely been worth the price of admission, which was a top five pick. Wasn't it? What, what, six, maybe? Maybe we got him six, but look at that. 14 and 16, 13, almost 14 and 7, 12 and 15. He is one of the best wide receivers in the league, and he is a true replacement to A.J. Brown that the Titans have been just missing. So on the defensive side, obviously the big change. We're switching from a 3-4 to a 4-3. We're going to see if that is going to be able to spark the defense. As you look, this is an incredibly well-rounded defense. We have some elite players. 
Jeff Simmons now back at D-Tackle. I think that will open things up. He's a 94. We have Walter Nolan, 88 X-Factor. We have just no weaknesses. Secondary is a complete secondary. Maybe don't have elite players across the board. That is tough to do. But I think with this switch to a 4-3, we have guys like McCreary. Vincent's young enough. Stone has a shot. I mean, he, we've already seen him jump up to a superstar. I think Walker, second-year player out of Georgia, could still make a jump up in dev trade. Devondre Sweat in this new role could also play well enough to get a upgrade in dev trade. There still is a lot of these guys on this star that have their best football ahead of them for this rebuild. So I think even though we see a lot of silver, there is chance to get a couple gold sprinkled in, and that makes this defense look a whole lot more upsidey. So let's get into year four. Very optimistic. We will be competing for another divisional title in a deep playoff run. An excellent start. Anytime you could beat Kansas City, straight up, Sim, you feel like you can beat anybody. 35-25, we handle business. Texas are also going off right now, but they only just have a game in hand. We had our bye. They haven't. So uh, it's going to be a battle. Definitely going to come down to the wire. Houston is playing really, really good football. But let's take a look here. In-house signings, the last players that we are going to have to deal with handing out contracts. A lot of depth guys, a lot of starters. And I think we have enough cap to keep the starters. I'll take that back. Damn, uh, we might get okay. I okay. Best case, we restructure. We re restructure a couple guys. I'd like to keep all three. Gibbons has been a good role player for us. Stone's obviously been solid, has had a great year. And Tavondre Sweat, uh, part of our, our first draft class, like to see him, you know, stay together with that tandem. Him and Jeff Simmons. So. Come the end of the year, maybe we'll we'll see if we can move some money around and keep the band together. But it is very much looking unlikely that we'll be able to spend big in free agency. But, you know, honestly, we've been spending big in free agency the last couple of years, especially on the offensive line. So that's kind of, uh, we know, we're paying the pipe here a little bit. You can't keep everybody type deal, especially when you're throwing out. How many we signed? What? Ronnie Stanley, Frank Ragnow, Wyatt Teller, Joe Tooney. That's, that's, that's been a lot of money on the O-line. And not too bad, annoying that the Texans were right with us all year long, both tied 13 and 4. I imagine that's the one seed. They had the tiebreaker to get it. Oh, they did not. Wow, three teams, 13 and 4 in the AFC. Cincinnati, Houston, and Tennessee. Hopefully, we're the last team standing. Whoa! I mean, we go an individual here, but look at Rome Odunze. Here in year four, the top wide receiver in the league. 113 catches, 1,800 yards, 22 touchdowns. That is a bad, bad man right there. Will Levis, top five in yards, second in touchdowns. That's the kind of year I was expecting with this Bengals playbook. At some point in time, he was going to play like this. That might be good enough to give us a Will Levis X-Factor quarterback going into the fifth and final year of this rebuild. Now he's 28. Maybe they'll be a little harsher with the age. I think we're going to get it. Uh, we got 11 and 12 there for Tajay Spears. Love that. Love that threshold. Odunze, just ridiculous. Average 107 a game. Just under 1,000 for Burks, who's carved out a role as a, as a really nice wide receiver, too, for us. Ideally, maybe in a perfect world, we'd have two wide receiver ones like A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, you know, those kind of deals. But that's still really good. Uh, Gadsden at tight end made some plays for us as well. Same with the Conquo, kind of go with a two tight end front there. Um, can't complain too much about that. Defensively, Walker stepped up. He's emerging a little bit, especially we can't re-sign Gibbons. We got our, like, main dog there at linebacker. But the switch to a 4-3 did not yield the sacks that we were really looking for. Needs to be, uh... Needs to be said. Hmm. I think we commit with... I think we stay another year in the 4-3, to be honest with you, but... The bummer. I was hoping we'd see a couple double-digit guys. Interceptions back up, though. Four picks for Curry. Four picks for Caleb Farley. I think needs to be said. Underrated aspect of this rebuild is Caleb Farley's carved out from bust to, like, you know, maybe both Farley and Burks. I think Titan fans are kind of the fence. Are they going to be a bust? Are they going to be able to salvage their career? And at least in this rebuild, they've both been able to do that. Farley, like, four picks, two picks, three picks, four picks. He's been playing well. So full credit to Denard Wilson and his defense. 
for getting the most out of our player. MVP goes to CJ Stroud. Will Levis down there at six again. Has not been getting a lot of love for the MVP award, even though he's putting up MVP numbers. Odunze, Offensive Player of the Year. Is that the second time he's won that? Which is insane. He's also likely going to be Wide Receiver of the Year. Wyatt Teller gets Lineman of the Year. He's already on Superstar. So it's uh, I don't think I've ever seen a, a Superstar Lineman win an award and go up to an X-Factor. But uh, hell yeah, in the playoffs here. Looking for a playoff win against the Dolphins. 87 overall, solid squad. Top 10 offense. They have the worst defense, though, in the NFL. Ours is not much better. It's going to be which offense is going to want to get the job done. And it's us, 31-24. The Titans get the job done with Tavondre Sweat. Set to hit the open market. I really want to try to afford him and keep him here. But anytime you get a nose tackle, they led our team in sacks this year. Gets a nose tackle, 350-pound nose tackle. Getting sacks like that, you want to keep him in the building. I think some contracts are going to be getting restructured here. Will Levis, huh? Give us a free 10 mil. Kick that can down the road, potentially. But that sets up a absolute banger in the AFC Divisional Round to find out who the best team is going to be in the AFC South. The 13-4 Texans, the 13-4 Titans. They're a better team. They are yet to give it to them. Overall, pound for pound, statistically. But this is to avoid a year five Super Bowl or best against the... Who said we get it done? One score. 28-21. Roger McCreary. They did not protect the football at all. Two picks. Roger McCreary on C.J. Stroud. Getting player of the week. J.J. McCarthy is absolutely crushing it right now on the other side of the bracket for the Minnesota Vikings. But focusing on what we're doing here in this building. Two back-to-back -back stellar defensive individual performances. Put us in the AFC Championship game against Lamar Jackson, who only threw one interception all season long, and the Baltimore Ravens. It's going to be tough. But we got a little bit of our Cinderella run here. We're trying to run the gauntlet here. Baltimore's offense is 17th. They do have the number one defense. What does the number one defense look like? Like, just very quickly, when you see a defense that's, like, rated in the 90s and they're actually, like, playing really well, just a little curious. Like, what have you put together? You got Matt Abuke, 92. Sam Williams, 82. McKinley Jack. Okay, so, like, not much on that D-line. They got Roquan Patrick Queen. Always developed nice. Anthony Hill Jr. So, like, their linebackers are ridiculous. Their defensive front, nothing special. Back end, they got Marlon Humphrey, 92 superstar. DJ Tampa. Marcus Williams. Kyle Hay I mean, it's just... I'll be honest with you. That is a defense that is overachieving. To be that good. I'm not seeing something that's scaring us. I think we should beat them. I think we should be featured in the Super Bowl. And we lose a uh, close one. One score game. 20 to 14. That is their defense, man. They got two picks on Will Levis. Will Levis still had 300 yards passing, which is impressive. A dude said would not be contained. But on the back end, Patrick Queen and TJ Tampa with the crucial turnovers. As Tennessee so close yet so far away, but we're we're there. Our momentum, we're snowballing. Year four, we get to the, we get to within one score of going to the Super Bowl. Year five, we'll put it all together. But first things first, we got to restructure some guys so we can retain our impending free agents. Ooh, this is kind of cool. Get to watch live as Rome Odunze gets himself his his Golden Gloves ninety. Nine overall. What would he start as? Like a 70, 78 superstar? Not not like we're coming out here with humble beginnings for how Dunze started. But anytime you get 99 X Factor, you were a monster. All right, so we do have $17 million. That's like what we got from the salary cap going up. So I think with that, we can at least get to Vondre Sweat. Who's the big fish we need to land? Locked in. So we got Geno Stone and Jack Gibbons as the two players that I would like to keep. Aaron Brewer set to the open market, so we are going to need a new center, which I feel somewhat optimistic. Oh, man, an 89 punter. We'd love to keep that, even though special teams doesn't... I could not tell you, after all my years of rebuilding, if special teams has anything to dictate in the sim. 89 punter, you always like keeping those. But I think we'll restructure a couple guys, see if we can keep Gibbons and Geno Stone in the building. And what none will be no bigger than getting an additional $11 million by restructuring Will Levis.
We got Will Levis, Tajay Spears, Traylon Burks, Peter Skaronsky were really the big players that were able to get ourselves a little bit of wriggle room. 25 mil to try. We got Geno Smith, so the interest is there to stay. We're not going to have to drastically overpay. And we got him to sign on. 12 mil remaining should be enough to at least try to keep Jack Gibbons here, which we are able to. But that gets us just under... the punter too let's go get a center in the draft and let's run it back i'll say this after doing our scouting here of the centers we're gonna need to get this guy if we if chandler buckler very clear with three a's and a b he actually looks like he's gonna be an incredible center but the drop off after him is so gigantic 40 reps on the bench press which is insane we, he has to be our pick corner of the box drafts which you can't always trust he is going in the second round so, I'm going to be, just one time, just one time, don't lie to me. Don't you lie to me. And he's still on the board, so I'm going to jump up eight spots. Straight over the Pittsburgh Steelers, go from 30 to pick 22 in the first round. I'm giving up my second round this year and my second round next year. Because the reality is, we need one player. That's it. We get this center. Hopefully, he's going to be a stud. And then our roster is pristine. Our roster is as good as it's going to get to go on and win a Super Bowl. Chandler Buck looks like an outstanding. Couldn't get a better role, I don't think, for needing a center. I'm going to guess 76 on top of those great at face value stats. Hey, take a look at our final draft recap. Swinging for the fence. Oh, I, I said 76. I undersold it here. 74 for Buckner. Hidden Dev, we got a 71 guard here, Sammy Porter. Hidden Dev out of Texas A&M. So great year to grab some linemen in the fourth round. 72 corner out of Washington State. But happy with the center that we got. That guy does still, even though he's two points less, he is a scheme fit, day one, starter, ready type player. All right, so this is it. Year five, Super Bowl or bust for the Tennessee Titans, which has been a very, very... Good team that we've been able to build up here is Will Levis is the biggest change on the offense from year four to year five is he is now an X factor got himself the bazooka which stylistically fits what he's working with with his 99 throw power. I mean, he's been great. Will Levis has been everything as advertised been playing like a fringe MVP candidate. He's done everything he can to keep this offense rolling as an elite unit. We need the defense to pick it up, honestly, to be the most part. And I think the defense is going to do so. They're going to answer the call. On the defensive side, Walker's now up to a superstar. McCreary up to a superstar. So this defense is better than what it was a year ago, even with a little regression out of Hooker and uh, Jeff Simmons. I still think across the board, not worried one damn bit. I think this is going to be a team. As long as Houston doesn't have another insane season, we are also, we're going to be right back in there. 12, 13, 14 wins. Let's see if we can get that first round by. Let's see if we can make it a little easy on ourselves here for year five. For year five, we at least win the AFC South, I believe, for the third time. Might be two, might be three. I've done this rebuild over two days, so bear with me. I think it's our third divisional title. We are 91 overall. The bad news is we lost week 17 and week 18 and likely choked the one seed. I think we were the one seed for most of the season, and it, yeah, two straight losses at crunch time. The fraudulent talks are out. Are the Titans... For real. We get a you know instant revenge opportunity. Week 18 against Buffalo. Open up the wild card around against them. Josh Allen's not killing it. For sure. He's getting up there in age a little bit. We have the number five offense. Well, the defense, man. You gotta take trust with the three four. I hate that the sacks are not particularly great or the takeaways aren't particularly great. But overall, a top five defense. This could be the year. That's auto spend these points. Let's take a look at the season stats. Let's take a look at the career stats. What we've been able to do here through this five year period. And then shift all of our focus on to Super Bowl or bust. Well, Levis, I mean, solid year. Definitely not the 40 bonds that we're hoping, but at least the interceptions are down if his passing tutties are going to be. Tajay Spears with a very respectable season. Odunze continues to crush it. 1,300 yards, 10 tuds, almost 1,000 for Burks, almost 1,000 for Estrada Conqua with a respectable year. Defensively, no 100-yard tacklers. Sacks are... Just one of them things, just could never get it rolling here. That's still not bad from D-Tackle, though. Our two D-Tackles leading the team. Just edge rusher, not so much. 
Uh, interceptions also down. The veteran Jack Gibbons leading the team with two picks. We'll just burn through the yearly awards. So I don't think we're going to have anybody. No one really stood out this season. But what about the career stats? We've had some players that throughout this has been able to stand up. Will Levis through five years, 23,000 yards passing, 183 tuds to 52 picks. And obviously developing up to an X factor. As an older prospect, he started at 25 years old. Not like 20, 21, like you're saying, doing like with Anthony Richardson. And uh, I think that's a pretty damn co good career so far. So definitely if you are a Titans fan that has been pissed off by the fact that you just can't develop Will Levis if you do a Sim franchise. Well, now that you got the Cincinnati Bengals playbook, and that's not cheesing it to put it in there, you can have a lot of fun with Will Levis and growing and developing this offense. Tajay Spears, the man trying to, I don't even want to disrespected by saying trying to replace Derrick Henry but the man that took over for Derrick Henry did you know commendable job considering how much our offense was pass heavy now 5600 yards 58 touchdowns in five years six years I think it would be six that's not bad uh we got in four wow five seasons Roma Dunze 476 catches 7200 yards 70 touchdowns hall of fame trajectory there's no other way to put it he's been in crowd he's getting the thumbnail he was probably getting the thumbnail anyway, but he's for sure getting in the thumbnail after how he's played. 5,500 yards, 36 touch for Burks, who's, yep, kind of beat off. Pause. Kind of beat off the uh, the bust. Pause, I guess. Where are we going with this? He has defeated the not a good first round pick discussion, I think. He's carved himself out a really nice role. Uh, Aconco has been a good role player for us as well. Defensively, Hooker. 690, uh, 690 tackles, 670 for Jack Gibbs, who I think was like a UDFA guy. You know, he's, he's here to represent Mike Vrabel, what Mike Vrabel did to to you know propel this team. 58 and a half sacks, 113 TFLs for Jeff Simmons. But man, definitely um, definitely was lacking the sacks in this rebuild. 15 picks hooker, 14 from Farley, another redemption guy. 13 for McCreary, 12 for Stone, 8 for Gibbons. I was you know happy with the interception numbers. Really, everything outside of sacks... Has been very good for the Tennessee Titans. But we've only had one realistic rebuild so far that has not yielded in a Super Bowl. And that was the Denver Broncos. Is Tennessee going to avoid going on that list? Because I'm not in the mood right now to do a sixth free year. We got 40 centimeters. I don't know what that is in inches of snow that I got to go shovel. And I said, I'm going to go finish this rebuild first. And I want to procrastinate. Well, we got to get this one out here. And look at that. Jeff Simmons sacks have been an issue. Not in the big-time playoff game, as we'll just ignore the fact Dak Prescott's the quarterback for the Raiders. And Jeff Simmons getting a three-sack performance against Josh Allen and the Bills, putting us into the division round against Dak Prescott and the Vegas Ra You're almost going to see, like, they got Dak. Who else does Vegas have right now? I'm going to guess, you know, Josh Jacobs, right? Josh Jacobs, always a stalwart for Vegas, plays till he's 40, and always just puts up big-time numbers. So they got Dak Prescott, Josh Jacobs, X Factor. They got Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers. So like kind of Dawson Knox. For the most part, pretty much just like the Raiders. Offensive line, very similar. Defense got 99 X Factor, Max Crosby, Tyree Wilson. They got Josh Farmer. They drafted out of Florida State. Frankie Louvu. They got a nice linebacker here. Devontae McCain, superstar. Nate Hobbs, Terry and Arnold. So they drafted him in the first round of the very first draft that we did when we got Odunze. Raiders went Terry and Arnold. Their safeties are pretty nice. All right, they got Justin Tucker. Weird roster, but I'm not. I'm not concerned. I think we'll get this one done here, yes, sir. Not only we get it done, we handle business. Thirty-eight to fifteen. Roger McCreary with two picks, four tuds for Will Levis. And Tennessee is back in the AFC Championship. I'm worried. And I think because I'm not doing a six-year, an, an overtime year, I'm going to play this one. We're going to hop in the AFC Championship game. We're going to try to do whatever we can to beat the Bengals. And then it just gives us a, a shot at a Super Bowl. Even though I won't be able to interject, use our three cash-ins, I'm going to do it here. Well, hopefully I don't have to use them here. Hopefully we can sit here and watch, just watch Tennessee mow down the Bengals. But we will cash them in here if we need to, just to at least make a Super Bowl and give ourselves a chance at this not being an epic, utter, goddamn, piece of shit, failure rebuild. All right, let's go. We are at Paycon Stadium. Sure, that's a real name. And we're just in a nice 14 point, 14 point deficit. We'll come in now. We got to cash it. I'm worried. That was 
That's this is worrisome. Give me something juicy here. Cross drag. That sounds good. Russo Dunze. That's the guy we want to get the ball to. This actually might be a trail on Burks. This looks like a trail on Burks running away from the safety. Let's go, baby. Tie this one up at 14. See if we can bring this one into halftime as such. Maybe get a little points here. Red zone. Come on, punch it in. We settle for a field goal. It's one of them games, huh? We're going to get in position. We're going to settle for field goals. All right, we'll cash in again. I mean, we had to, there's no point. Can't save the two cash ins for the Super Bowl. We got to use them here. So let's see if we can get. I just, let's hit Odunze. They got this. Quick, 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 quick. Get the first down. They are putting. I don't know who that is at 23 there. Is that Daxton Hill? It is. He is up to a superstar. And it looks like they're going to try to have him shadow Odunze just a little bit. So let's come in here. We got a tight end vertical. Just press a dunes. Oh, we do. It's not the play call. We got them pressing Burks. Look at that off the line. What is the safety? Look, the safety comes in the double team. That is a dot. Everyone sells out on the Bengals defense to take. I swear to God, they had triple coverage on a dunes at the first down marker. No respect for Traylon Burks. They think he's still a bust. And we're able to hit him deep. They're going for it on fourth down. There's no way we don't we don't close this one out here. There we go. Had to use in all three of our our wishes to get this one over the line. But 34-31, the Titans move on on a four touchdown, 300 yard performance. Buck 51 for Traylon Burks. The Titans are going to the Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl is set. The Titans are going to be taking on the San Francisco 49ers, who have the sixth offense, 26th defense. I've seen in the comments people want me to preview the teams we're playing, especially five years in, how much the rosters have changed, who is still there. So quickly looking at the Niners, they got Rock Purdy, who's a 99 superstar quarterback now. You got CMC. They still have the Avengers on offense. Yeah, CMC, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel. Kittle's going to be gone. Nope, Kittle is still there. Patrick Paul. So they've replaced Trent Williams with a very good left tackle on Patrick Paul. They got Norwell. So the offensive line across the board, no weaknesses. You got Nick Bosa, 99. Dwayne Carter. So got 99 there in in uh, Fred Warner. Dre Greenlaw, 89, but also has an X factor. 92, 92, 84 in the secondary. Lenore, Ward, and Sandstrom. They got the V. They got Vaki. How they get Vaki? 95 X factor. Hufong got 99. So yeah, still the Avengers here. In San Francisco, I'm a little worried. I really wish we had, <laughs> we were able to play on and control a little bit of this game. We're going to likely have to sit here and how are they only in 89 with that team, with that roster? All right, we're going to be at the mercy of a uh, very good roster. One of the better five-year-in sim teams. The fact they were able to retain all those guys and draft as well as they did. If they've replaced their whole offensive line, they're still all in the 80s. This is going to be tough. I'm going to be honest with you. I, my, my, I'm like 60-40 we're going to lose. But we get out to the lead here in the first half. Kyle Shanahan, not a big game coach, needs to be said. One thing that's kind of uh, the, the dark cloud. Oh, man, if we can get a touchdown here before half. We settle for the field goal. Kind of dark cloud over the Niners. It's just Shanahan can't win the big game. Maybe that won't age well in a couple days' time or weeks' time. We need to stop. They're going to go. They're going to get it. This is going to be an L. Oh, it might not be an L. We're going overtime. Oh, my God. Let me play. We gotta, we'll go like this, though. Because it's going overtime and we get the ball. Let's go from fast sim to, uh, to like, play-by-play. -play. All right. We start with a nine-yard pass to Traylon Burks. Move the chains. Shot play here. 15 to Oconquo. Another shot play. 13 to Oconquo. Pick it on the older linebackers. Even though they're 99, the speed's probably not there. We get 14 to Traylon Burks. Oh, my God. What a drive so far. But if they can bend, don't break. And it looks like they're going to be able to. We go with two garbage runs back-to-back. -back. Settle for a field goal. 
Let's see what we can do against the Niners offense. To get a little Purdy. We get a penalty against the fullback. They get a shot play 26 to Ayuk. This is not looking particularly good. We get a Tavondre Sweat sack. Brings up third and 18. Fourth and 10. They're going to settle for a field goal as well. Next score wins. Ball is in Tennessee's court here. Come on, baby. 12 yards to Estrada. Oh, no, it's not looking good. Go for it. Don't punt it. Don't you dare fucking punt this. Oh, my God. Why? Well, we get a gonger. This is not going to be good, though. I, there's no... There's no... Okay, we're trading punts. Defensive battle here. Come on. Let's put it away here. We get a nice 15-yard penalty. Roughing the passer. 14 to Odunze, who seems to be having a quiet game. Another first down, and we are in field goal range. Third and one. We run it. Tajay Spears, six yards. This is a manageable. This is an attainable field goal. Come on, baby. Third and three. We get a first down. No turnovers. And we get a walk-off. Oh, they just kicked the field goal. Let's go, baby. The check mark. For the time, that was an epic one, man. We got to give credit to the Niners for making that one as intense as it was. That was a hell of a roster. I was nervous. I was worried. An intense overtime game. Field goal, field goal, punt, punt. Who's going to blink first? And the narrative that Kyle Shanahan can't win the big one reigns true in this one. Is Will Levis. Air that up. It's going to cry. It's so great. What a dub. Let's get that Super Bowl hoisted up here and wrap this one up. Roma Dunze, Tavondre Sweat, Walter Nolan, Jalen Walker. From the ranks of college football to the pros, moment wasn't too big. Look at that. Will Levis, X-Factor, thriving in this new Bengals offense style, Titans team. The new era could be bright. MVP? No, you you'd probably give it to a. I'd probably give it to a Dunze there. Honestly, ten catches, 125 yards, but an epic Super Bowl win. It's another one in the bank. So thank you guys for watching today's video. As always, please let me know in the comment section below what team you guys want to see next. Still, plenty of teams we haven't even done once of a realistic rebuild for. We got the Jets, Dolphins, Bills, Browns, Steelers, Bengals, Ravens, Jags, Colts, Texans, Chiefs, Commanders, Cowboys, Panthers, Saints, Bucks, Vikings, Packers, Lions, Cardinals, Rams, Seahawks, Niners. Probably not the Cardinals, just because main channel franchise. But in any of those teams I just mentioned, which one you guys want to see a realistic rebuild next? Comment down below. If it is your first time, stop by. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's your boy C4. Say a peace out. Love you. Have a good one.